And now it's time to review something of absolute Swiss precision. Are you guys ready? It is so excellent. It is highly, highly recommended. The Victorinox Cadet. Swiss precision. <laughs> TD's here with me, dude. You will be hard pressed to find anything better. <laughs> I love this color, by the way, TD, don't you? It's a cool one. So if you don't know, you should if you watch the videos, is we laser engraved all our carry cadet knives when we did our special edition light blue cadet, which has gone way up in collectability, hasn't it? Yeah, it's super We'll never see another one again on the face of the earth, most likely. And we might be reviewing right now, speaking of Swiss, the Sphinx SDP, that is Sierra Delta Papa, Compact Gray Alpha. Holy crap, that's a long name. It's a long one. Show them the gun, TD. Da, 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 da. So thank you to Gunnies, the great American gun store, for the loaner on this. Uh, we were walking the store. Wyatt and myself, I saw this gun. I'll be totally honest with you guys. I'm never super stoked to review yet another CZ clone. Because yeah. I don't think it's really that innovative. No. There's so many of them. We've talked about CZ so many times. I mean, here's my Red Star CZ 75, shown many years in TMP. We love it. And we love the CZ 75, don't get me wrong. But is it really cutting edge? Not so much. Is the sphincter, me, the sphinx really cutting edge? Okay. If you click around on the interweb, I'll hear phrases like, uh, it comes from a competitive heritage. Uh, it's like a freaking Swiss watch. It features tighter tolerances never seen in a CZ75 before. I'm just saying what I've seen online. I, it's hand fitted. Awesome. They was, say that on their website. Yeah, I was expecting a lot more. I had read up on the CZ75 and kind of the heritage the other day because I was wondering okay. why so many damn ripoffs are in the market. There's so it's many. It's weird. Tanfolio, EA tons. Witness. And I was like, how did that CZ come has a about? ton of variations. Because it's a relatively new design, and Sphinx is one of the ones when they had done the patents for the CZ. There was a bunch of stuff. So basically, it was open season. And Swiss Sphinx ended up deciding, hey, let's make a version of our, our own. And when you hear about that one, it is hand fitted. It's beautiful. It is luxurious. It is so high end and expensive. You'll never see one in the flesh. And then I saw it and it's, it's kind of just like every other pistol. It's a little bit tighter, but it's kind of just like every other one. When I picked it up in the store, I was actually going, first off, this is pretty damn heavy. <laughs> Here's a compact pistol weighing 33 ounces. Jeez. Now, before you uh, Sphinx fans go off and uh, start telling me how much you love yours and how wrong we are, check this out. It's a compact form factor at 33 ounces. I'm all for a competitive pistol, but why not make it a full size? That's what makes very little sense to me. Do you see a lot of competitors in whatever category you want to specify running compact pistols? Nope. No. You're going to see him running a, a long slide, kind of like this Glock 17L, y'all. So this was made for competition, the 17L. And, and you're going to see five-inch barrels. It, they're commonplace in competitions. More velocity, longer sight radius. And yes, Sphinx has promised a full-size version of this. And guess what? It's never materialized. And so you're stuck with a, a gun the size of a Glock 19 that weighs 33 ounces. Okay. But, I mean, if you throw the second cool flag out and you go, oh, but I love that. Okay. Rock on. I, I'm all for it. Uh, and on we go to philosophy use. What do you use this gun for, then, if it's 33 ounces and it's a 3.7 inch barrel tactical doodle? What would you use it for? I, If you bought it, describe the purchaser of this gun. What's he looking for that he's not finding in other guns? I can only imagine it's the allure of something different and quirky. Something Swiss. It's, I want to add something, and they, they like the idea of Swiss, hand-fitted, yeah. the best of the best. Right. And it's kind of funny, because when you look at the party line, mm -hmm. they talk about how they took the CZ75 design decades ago and tirelessly refined it. Right. It is so much better, so much more wonderful, so just blows it right out of the water. It seems about like a normal CZ75 to me in its fitting and in its approach. Is it really that different? It's different in appearance. It's blockier. It's, it's damn block. It's Cerakoted in gray, which is a cool color. Hans, make sure you only put one bevel in the side. <laughs> Keep it square all the way to the front. 
<laughs> I want as much mass in the pistol, not necessarily in the front of the pistol, but <laughs> the competition shooters want to put it in the back. This and looks in the like arsh. kind of 226-ish to me. Yeah. Uh, other than, of course, slide inside frame approach of the CZ75 line, for sure. Yeah. But, okay, so we got the gun. We're talking about philosophy use. What do you use it for? Uh, CCW? No. Concealed carry? No. Home defense? Maybe. Collectible? It makes you happy? Yeah. Yeah. If a guy in this review says, hey, second cool, I just love my sphincter. Oh, <laughs> there Rock I go on. again. I'm sorry. My sphinx? Then it's a get out of jail free yeah. card. No one can criticize that. And if you say that, I'm saying, hey, I'm happy for you. But as far as a go to war pistol, for me, no. Com competition pistol, no. The, sh the sighting radius is too short. Yeah. And go to the CZ lineup. You want to see some competitive CZ 75 pistols, go to CZ. Yeah. Those guys got it going. <laughs> You're talking like awesome guns. They're heavy, but they're competition guns. Yep. They're long sight radius. They have perfect triggers. This one has a trigger job by Yoda. This one does. So this trigger in this standard CZ 75 Cold War is actually pretty excellent. I would stack it up against the Sphinx any day. In pretty much any category you want to say. Uh, and we'll get on to how it shot. Super quick uh, features, I guess. We'll talk about it. We do love the gray color. The, the color fooled me. When I first saw it, I thought, cool, awesome. And it's then I thought tricky. to myself, if this were black, would I think this is heinously ugly? And the answer is absolutely. Yes. I will never forgive yes. the Swiss for this crime upon my <laughs> eyeballs. Okay, so... Um, the thing that really strikes me is it's so blocky and slab-sided. So weird. this is a billet frame, and it's heavy, and they do mill it out. But what have I have always said about billet when we talk about an AR pattern rifle? It adds weight. It almost always adds weight over forged. That's what I've seen, and I'm seeing it again in this gun. Slab-sided. Gray is a great color. But we have found what we have found is that it's not really properly prepped. Look, you can see some of the Cerakote having come off in our testing. And this is from us right being here. careful. We're not abusing this that's Cerakote. That's a prep problem right there, dude. And you're talking to someone who has Cerakoted, so has TD a lot. We've done a ton of guns that have turned out absolutely perfect. A ton of knives that have turned out. We know how to prep for Cerakote. We've, sh we've shot them, we've cooked them. So that's not good. If you look inside the magazine, well, it's even worse. All the Cerakote is coming off in here. Um, that seems improperly prepped to me as well. I, not that you wouldn't have wear in there. Yeah. You would, but um, but it, it shouldn't be that bad. There's a funneling of the mag well, by the way. It does take CZ-75 mags. That's Which good. good, yeah. Of course, it is a CZ-75, so that does make sense. Polymer and base plates. There are two magazines that come with it. 17 plus 1 is a capacity. You have wraparound uh, grip straps, and they have yeah. interchangeable ones here in the case. Show them the case right here, bro. Fit it on, does it? Yeah. So this is a plastic case that it comes with. I'm pretty unimpressed with it. I think it should be cut out foam, not this cheesy stuff right here where everything pops out from it. Here's your, I don't know, interchangeable back straps if you want it. They have an, a tool to help you out. Extra mag, loading tool, cleaning kit. And there is a coupon for a uh, Swiss Army knife in there. Sweet! I made that part up. Uh, the grip actually is all CZ75. C C it's good. I like the grip. It's comfortable, don't you think, TD? Yeah. You have some scalloping on the grip here. You have some very shallow finger grooves here, some striations for whatever purpose. Mostly visual interest, I think. But it's a CC75 grip, so it's comfortable. Yeah. The magazine release is fine. Didn't notice any problems with that. You can reverse it to this side if you want. Uh, there's your hammer drop. It does have a bobbed hammer. It's a double action to single action transition. You can cock it, as I'm showing you right here. Um, is it as intuitive as a SIG? Uh, not really. It seems like the decock lever for me should be right here. And I'm always coming back and bump, come back here. There's your slide release here. It almost seems this is where the decock lever should be. <laughs> Maybe not that far forward. Uh, did you have a problem with it, TD? Mm-mm. Okay, the trigger is really nice on the SDP Compact. We like it a lot. The single action trigger pull is nice. It has a really crisp reset on it, I think. Pocket. Here's your reset. Right there. So short reset. It's really audible. That's all good. So really nice trigger. Great, great trigger guard. Perfect. Like it's hooked here. It's flat. Very SIG-ish. Large for gloves. Four slot pick rail. That's all good. <coughs> I think it's high quality in the materials. It um, is high quality. 
Not so much in the application of Cerakote, but in every other way, I think it is. And you can really, some of the little machining things right here, kind of living up to the name. Yeah, they, that is cool. You know, if you right read here. about them, they oh, it was all hand fitted and just so much sumptuous machining. Sumptuous. And, you know, you see it in person. I don't know. I just like the, the checks could freaking contour some of this and get rid of some weight. So this is a forge frame right here, the Cold War. Like, come on. Uh, this To me, this turns me on as much as this one does. Actually, more because of the Cold War variation. Yeah. Not a legitimate Cold War. We have to keep telling guys that because they haven't seen the other videos on it. Yeah, I don't know, over the past 14 or so years. Something like that. Good slide serrations here. You have a really cool beveling here. That looks like CZ P07 to me. Yeah. That's a that's kind of a takeoff on a P07, the, uh, P09 series. P320. The beveling. They yeah. do that one too, the, the yeah. weird undercut. The totally. Skrillex cut. Skrill Skrillex. I like that reference. Uh, nice sights on it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they're like amazing, but they're nice. We found it to be well regulated. A standard lockup that you would see on a SIG or a Glock. Nice big external extractor. You can see right now, subject to change, who knows what's going to happen. It's imported by Chris. Is it? Yeah, the Chris group. And they have the brands of Chris, Defiance, and Sphincter. I'm sorry, Sphinx. So those are the three brands that Chris USA is 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 uh, managing right now all that subject to change who knows what the future holds for this i thought this was made in the u.s with swiss parts now uh, that's what's confusing because the original sphinx in switzerland went out well, of business look, it says right here made in switzerland but the way i heard it was sphinx the swiss company went out of business in 2015 you could be absolutely it was so chris may have bought a bunch of the swiss parts off of that and then, and then they then assembled it started assembling honestly it. i don't know I don't really know, and I don't know. I it's don't a really Scooby Doo care. mystery. <laughs> it's a Scooby Doo Start mystery. Start looking into it. Maybe it was the old man in the ghost costume. Okay, so those are features. It's heavier than crap. Oh, it is beveled right here inside the trigger guard, so that's a nice touch. Awesome. And if we're, if we're going to really make a big deal about such beveling on a 1911, we have to mention it here. Yeah. It's beveled right here. So there is some nice frame detail here. It is an aluminum frame, of course. I just wish they could apply the same amount of beveling. and it's Because this is, I like that. I like the arbitrary, you know, lines everywhere, all that stuff. Just apply that to maybe the upper half of the frame here. Right. If they had done like some right. of it, even if it's pointless, just to add a little bit of visual stuff. Nice line. beaver tail, by the way. Uh, undercut on the trigger guard, and you can see some of the Cerakote wearing off here. So it is comfortable, nice, prote yeah. nice protected gun, of course. Uh, and before we move on to how it's shot, this is a Shaula Steel Will. Link below, it is a fantastic high value knife. In D2, red, because it matches the red tail flashes of this F-18 Hornet, the Estrogen Squadron. <laughs> oh wait, that doesn't say Estrogen. Dude, I thought that was a unicorn on the back. It says Estosin, but I'm going to call this the Estrogen F-18 Hornet. Yeah, it's another squid plane. Uh, F-18 is awesome. I love yeah. F-18s. Please give me one with all the maintenance and fuel included. That'd be cool. Love it. I, this is actually really a cool model. 172nd scale, tabletop decoration. I forgot where I got this. It's pretty inexpensive. On we go to how it shot. Smoothness, was it good? Yeah. Trigger, was it good? Very. Reliability, was it good? It was. The Sphinx has uh, excellent wait reliability wait in all the conditions between 40 wait and just 60 a second. degrees Fahrenheit. They're telling me this is hand fitted, so it's got watch. to be reliable, but it wasn't. In fact, it had all types yeah, of problems with all types yeah, of loads. Like it. it did not like steel cased ammo. Before you get all excited and you start sta uh, slamming away on your keyboard, we didn't shoot a lot of steel case. We just had a quantity of it. And so we just decided to run some through. Function test. It, function test it. And a lot I of do that with a lot of guns. It. As much as Absolutely. everyone in the gun media, everyone in the club, everyone who shoots a lot. Yeah, I never use steel. It can save you 40%. Lots of your average buyers in the end run end up buying it. Right. And for dudes, it's make or break. It can wear out your extractor nothing. So replace your extractor. Uh, tell that to the guy who shoots 200 rounds a year. Exactly. He takes it out once. You exactly. Shoot, it'll be fine. Right. And let's say you did shoot a bunch and wear wear out an extractor. Awesome. Uh, you, well, it's awesome if you have a mainstream pistol, but if you have a Sphinx, good luck getting an extra part. Because word on the street is their customer service is not good. Well, they don't have a parts. bunch of them. People so, have said that yeah. you may have to be jerry rigging some CZ75 parts yeah. since it's a wildly improved version of the 75. This gun that TD's holding 
is reliable with everything we throw in it. It is a CZ75, classic CZ75. I don't remember when that gun has ever jammed. I once put Maybe a, 10 years ago, a couple times when we were first starting to shoot it. Go I, ahead. I put a primer in the back of a Tootsie Roll and it launched that <laughs> mofo so hard. And it was only like four and a half groups. It was awesome. It was, you know, it was perfect. So if you want to sling fudge, I guess, rock on. So we have a rack grade CZ75 that is way more reliable than this hand fitted Swiss. Hey. <laughs> Sphinx STP no, I Compact. Uh, I would give reliability probably a C minus, and that's being very generous. I should probably give it a D. We didn't just run steel cased ammo, did we, TD? Mm -mm. It brass was almost cased, a minority. Right. It was almost all brass cased. And we had a lot of stoppages with a lot of different brands. As I recollect, Federal ran 100%. SMB had problems. And we ran that same ammo in, what, five other pistols that loved it. Yeah. Had no problems with it, including Glocks, including a Taurus G3. It ate it up, including a Sarsila Maz ST9. It ate it up. Versa Thunder Pro. Ate it up. And yet we put it in this Swiss Sphinx, and it has problems. Not continuously, but here and there, problems. It sneers at your trash ammo. So reliability was not good. I, I'm being kind right there, by the way. And now we go on to accuracy of the uh, Swiss. So Swiss, Swiss ammunition must be used in Swiss. all conditions. Here we go. And I want to go quick because I'm losing interest in the gun. Uh, I would say accuracy is good. Yeah. I'm not going to say the accuracy is bad. It's really good. This is standing. Good. Really good. Really good. Actually, that's not good at all. Really good. Four shots. Eight yards. Several jams with Winchester told you smooth, accurate. So we're saying some good things. Smooth and accurate. There you go. That's a really good group right there. Here's another group. And this is before my shoulder operation. So this is left-handed, unsupported. Boom. Ask me why, why I had to do that. Because Wyatt and Josh could not get any groupings. I'm like, dude, you got to shoot it for accuracy. And off they go. And what happens? Looks like a damn shotgun with double odd buck. I'm like, are you kidding me? Where's your grouping? So I had to step up, single-handed, did it. I'm not making it up. So this is just single-handed, seven yards left hand. It's an accurate gun. Real smooth, accurate. And uh, by the way, Josh was loving it. He's like, oh, this is such a good gun. Right up until it started jamming. And then suddenly he lost interest. Um, would you buy it? Not at the... The... I... I don't know who's gonna buy this. It's a gun in search of a purpose. Unless you're a guy it. who wants something Swiss made and you say, I want, you know, it, maybe you cared about the manufacturer or the prestige or something. You just want that Swiss hole in the collection yeah. filled and you're not really gonna shoot it that much. More rubbing off of the Cerakote here on the back strap. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so if you have a Sphinx and you like it, don't let us influence you, rock yeah. on. Rock on, uh, we don't care for this gun for all the reasons noted. It's too heavy, it's not reliable. It is accurate, it is smooth. They should have come out with a full size, they didn't. I don't like the placement of the controls and I think it's rather expensive. I think it retails for 1050, albeit, yeah. look at the price at uh, freaking Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store, 599? Good job. It's probably because it won't sell. Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps, that's our review. Chris, Sphinx, SDP Compact. Uh, buy it and uh, have fun, I guess.